So, are we ready to hear God's message? Yeah. Andiyan na po ba ang mga pen and notes natin? Naka-cell, naka-off na po ang cell phone. Yan. Okay ha, walang distraction. This is the Lord's day. This is for the Lord. Amen? Master Robert? Thank you very much, Mr. Mark. Yes, you uh, more months to be busy here. And yes, baby, two months. Master Mark will be full pitch, Master. Can I mark up all the stuff in We are now in the last week of our uh, second month of the year. Bilis na panahon, di ba? Very fast. Days are flying so fast. And uh, since this is the fourth Sunday, we talk about fellowship. And uh, thankful of our message to this pursuing perfection in Christ. In all unity. Uh, what is the goal of our Christian life? Many times I look into some books, some internet, uh, research something. This topic, especially Philippians chapter 3. It seems that uh, some people are not established as to what is the goal of the Christian life. I admire even the people that I, uh, I get my research. I have uh, also some people whom I call my researchers. I put my, I put my researches. I have uh, Adam Clark. I have uh, David Gusick and I have uh, critical uh, criticism. These are uh, reliable sources. But somehow, when I go to the text in Philippians chapter 3, I seem not to get a clear answer as to what is the goal of the Christian life. There was one time I preached when I was in the missionary. And I was already centered by the I already had my conviction that the very goal of the Christian life or the aim of Christian life is to be Christ-like. To be Christ-like. Ever since I had that impression that the goal of Christian life is perfection in Christ or Christ-likeness. But somehow when I get into some other books by Christian writers, it seems that uh, we have a different view about this. But uh, I thank God, I still stand on that firm belief that the main purpose of the Christian life is to be christ -like. First of all, because, number one, we are predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. Then before you, then he predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, Jesus Christ. That is our predestination. God has already planned from the past, from eternity, that you and I will become Christ-like. And that to me is like a race. We are racing in this Christian life and that race started when the gun was shot. Starting gun. And what is that starting gun? Conversion. You start running towards the end towards the mark 
of the rays of the crystal line when you were seen. Please pray for us. We are now concluding our materials on our BBS this year. Uh, really, there are very few of us who are working here. We need more hands. We need more heart. We need more brains. No. If you are available, please come and join the band. We are determined to finish our uh, assignment by uh, March and we hope that we will be able to use the material this coming April for our church outreach and even in the tribal areas. So help us pray about it. And you know the topic there is about running the race. And uh, every one of us is called to that race. The time we have accepted Christ, we began racing towards the race of life. But what is the goal of that? There is the question. And I, for one, believe that it's Christ likeness. It's only this evening that I, I was trying to look at it and I said, am I wrong? Why is, that, why is it that most of these writers do not agree with me? Then when I went into the Bible of John MacArthur, who oh, praise God, there's one who is with me. There is an agreeable mind together with me. And really, I believe so because of the following verses. I still believe with all my heart, without doubt, that the goal of Christian life is to be Christ-like. Not only because it is predestined for us to be like Him, but secondly, in Philippians chapter 3 alone, in verse 10, the processes of becoming like Christ is there. To know Him, that is not to know Him only as your Savior, but to know Him as Lord until you go deeper in knowing Him. It's talking about experiential knowledge. Hindi mo lang kilala ang tao sa pangalan, kundi gusto mong kilalani ang buong pagkatao niya. At lang sa ganun ay lumalim ang inyong ugnayan. Pero po ang dapat mangyari sa ugnayan natin sa Panginoong Yesus. He wants us and He desires that we will be our friend or he will, we will be His friends, I should say, and not mere servants. No. And not only that, He said that we may experience the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings. All these are to be experienced in His present life. When we come to experience these things in our present life, then we, came, we come to becoming more like you. Then, in this present life, I look at, I took this from uh, Bain's Dictionary because I would like to compare the word perfect, perfect, perfect. No? The, men, the words that are mentioned here in verse uh, uh, 12 and in verse 15 because these words are not the same. If you read the, the English, it, there it is imperfect. But you know, the original does not say so. The original used to say different words for this. And there is the clue where you can come to understand what the author is talking about. And so it says, in this present life, I took these words from the Vine's dictionary, from uh, Vine, and he said, most paramount aim in life is to attain unto the resurrection of the dead. That is his paramount aim. To attain to the resurrection of the dead. But he is not talking about dying physically. He is talking about his spiritually. So what he says is that he would like to attain to the resurrection image of Christ. He would like to be identified with the Christ who resurrected from the dead in this present life, not when he dies. That is the point that he makes here. So this is talking of your life, your Christian life should be powerful to demonstrate 
the power of his resurrection. That you died to your life, the old life, and now you are living the life of Christ. And number four, it is it is what Paul has not obtained. Here in verse uh, uh, 12, it says, Not as though I had already attained. When I look into the word attain, Bible's dictionary tells me this is mistranslated. The word should not be attained. The word should be obtained. Not as though I had already obtained. What? Obtaining the perfection of that identification with Christ. Either we're already perfect, you see? That is connoted with perfection in Christ. And the time comes that we'll be perfectly like Christ. That is what he said. I have not yet obtained that. Because during that time, there were people who were teaching about perfectionism. There were some other teachers who say that in this life, you can attain perfection. Sing this perfection. That is what it is. The perfection of being exactly like Christ. But Paul is arguing against that. And he says, no, 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 that's not true. No one attains to perfection in this life. Sin is perfection. There is no such thing. I for one do not say that I have obtained it. I do not say that I am already perfect. That's why he said, I follow after that. I follow after him. And number five, it says, it's the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, to which Paul presses to reach as its mark towards which he runs. That is the mark of the price of the high calling of God. Pag sinabi po ang mark, yung po yung alat. In every race, there is a finish line. And that is the mark. I'm confused at times because some authors say that the calling, and the price of the calling is the race itself. No, it cannot be. The price cannot be the race itself because this has an end. It has a mark. And we all ought to reach that mark. And what is that mark? Skupun. The word mark means, is from the Greek word skupun, which means target. Like a target in shooting. Where you hit the you are a marksman and you hit the middle of it, the center of it. Uh, but if you miss it, you swerve. Just like in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, when Paul said to Timothy, there are others who do not understand the spirit of the Lord. And so this word, they do not get the word scopon is there. And so this word. They do not get the middle, the, 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 the right target. They miss the shot. They miss the aim. Nawawala sila sa target. Dumalabas yung tira nila. Likewise, this word scopon is used in 2 Timothy 2.18. When it says, there are people like Himenius and Philetus who are teaching that resurrection had already passed. Oh, they have heard from the True faith. The word earn means the miss the coupon. The miss the aim. The miss the target. That's the word earn. Yung po And so what is the target? What is the aim of the Christian life? To be Christ-like. Resurrection will naturally come to everyone. We do not race for the resurrection. Every Christian will resonate. But what will God reward? How we live our life in a Christ-like manner. That is the race. And in the end, God will reward us according to that. How we live our life in Christ-likeness. So that is the goal. 
and don't miss that. That is the target. Is your life aimed towards the target? Or do you say, oh, just, I joined the race, this is the prize? No, 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 it's not. We are all racing, and we must race towards that mark. We must go straight to that. And do not swerve. Let's not turn from that. Let's live a life of Christ like this. That's why, how do we reach it? First, in this chapter, it says, we must not let the past distract us. Forgetting the past. But sometimes, what Paul is saying about himself is that he, if he looks back to being a Pharisee, if he looks back at the things that he was boastful when he was not a Christian, the things that he has the right to brag, no, it would stop him from getting into that raise it to the mark. He said, do not let the past distract you, whether it be positive or negative. Uh, if it be positive, there is an idiomatic expression, do not lay on your laurels. Do not rest on your laurels. If you say, oh, I have done much already, that's enough. That will hinder you from uh, getting into the mark. If you look also at problems, it will also hinder you. Do not let these things hinder you. Do not also focus on the future that you do not leave the present. Both can be destructive to you, the past and the future. If you are too futuristic and you forget to leave the present, you will be negligent. You will not be running. That's why he said, what do I do in the present? I press on to the mark. We look at the future, and that is what challenges us to press on. And the word press on here means to stretch your legs in order to reach the finish line. As a runner, when he is racing with other runners, you have to stretch as far as your legs can be stretched so that you can be first in touching the finish line. That's the word, press. Let us stretch ourselves to the point that we will be able to reach the mark. So this is it, uh, brethren. And so, how do we do it again? Those are three things that involves the past, the future, and the present. But how again? We cannot do it by ourselves. We need each other. We need to raise together. You cannot run individually as Christians. You cannot make it. You need me, I need you. CDMC need to race together towards the mark. We need to be one in mind, one in heart, to race towards the mark. In being one, we can easily and reach the mark. We can victoriously, all together, let's not mark. Our gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray, loving God and Heavenly Father, that you will speak to us. I pray for the Holy Spirit to teach us, Lord. Guide us. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Minister to us through your word. I pray, to God, that this lesson that we will learn today will always remain as our challenge throughout our lives until you come. For you have said that faithful are you who called us into that race and you also will fulfill it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the assurance of victorious uh, race of life. Thank you, Rika, for predestining us to be like you. Help us, Lord, that we may have been in step with you so that this purpose will be fulfilled in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So there it is, brother. Do not forget that the goal and paramount aim of your life is to be Christ-like. And we have to press on to that every day of our lives. And these are the 
the suggestions that I would like to bring to your minds today, taking it from these verses. First, be mindful together. Let us be mindful together. I cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. Let us do it together. That's why unity is emphasized a while ago. Let us be mindful together about this. It says, let us therefore be perfect. Now, the word perfect here comes from the word teleo. The word perfect as mentioned in verse 12, is sinless perfection. In a form, teleomai. Oh, I'm not a Greek uh, scholar, but I would just like to show you that uh, there are differences in the words. Verse 12 talks about sinless perfection. Verse 15 talks about maturity. Perfect in the sense that you are mature. Not necessarily, not sinless perfection. Maturity. That is what Paul is saying. And so, if you uh, don't mind, we would put it there. Let us therefore as be perfect or mature, be less minded. Okay? So, under this, in order to be mindful together, para magkakasama tayo na iisa yung isip natin. Patungo dito, first, let us walk by the same rule. Let us walk by the same standard. Kung ano man yung ginamit nating role na naabot natin ngayon yung kinaroonan nating spiritual maturity. That rule by which we have abide, uh, abided in reaching our spiritual level today, let us continue to use that standard of rule so that we will continue the progress. So, sabi niya dito, as to that which we have already attained. We have already attained. In the sense that we have reached this kind of maturity, spiritual maturity, where we are now. We have attained to that. Of course, in this perfection, we have not yet attained to that. And we have not yet obtained that. But as to our spiritual maturity, we have come to that. And so, those who have come to that, let us walk by the same rule. The word is us. Which means it calls for unity. We have to go together. We have to be mindful together. We have to become one mind regarding this matter. As believers and members of CDMC, you have to be one in mind with your brethren. Do not be otherwise minded. Be one mind with us. Be one mind with the rule of Christ's likeness. That is our standard. That is the mark that we are going after. The word walk means to march in order like a military. It says, you march with us. You go the line. Everyone follows. Let us go together towards this direction of Christ like this. Do not be out of line. Do not be disorderly. You follow the pattern. You follow the rule. Everyone's going that way, follow that way. That's what he said. In the Bible of MacArthur, he says, to stay, to stay in line spiritually and to keep progressing by the same standard or principle that brought them to the point of spiritual growth for them. E. So, to it. Ang nasimulan na nagdala sa inyo sa pagiging mature, yun, ituloy ninyo. Sundan nyo pa rin. Okay. So let us walk by the same rule. Secondly, let us mind the same thing. Let's mind the same thing.
And if anything, I would go back to verse 15. It says, And if anything, you be otherwise minded, God will reveal this to you. Pero kung kayo hindi nakikisa sa amin kay si Pan, nananalangin ako, naliliwanagan din ng Panginoon ang kay si Pan ninyo. Paul is not uh, coercing God's people. He cannot force people to follow Him. They must voluntarily follow. They must voluntarily surrender their will and their thoughts to the Lord. Like He did. No one is being forced to do something. That is not pleasing to the Lord. You may try to go with the people but if your mind is not with them, what good is it? Is God pleased with that? No. He says, I believe we should walk this road. But if you think otherwise, I pray that God will reveal this to you. And as long as you strive to do God's will, God will reveal this to you. If you seek God's will, God will reveal this to you. But never use as an excuse that because you do not know and understand these things, you are not going to do what God has revealed things for you to do. Wag yung gawing excuse na hindi na kayo gagawa dahil hindi kayo nakikisa sa kaisipan. Kung ano ang pinapatawa ng Panginoon sa inyo, gawin ninyo. At huwag niyong gawin niyo kakulangan ng pangunawa para hindi kayo gumawa. Let's continue to go on. Because God will only reveal His will to people who strive to do His will. If you are not going to do God's will, He will not reveal His will to you. And that is what Paul is saying here. No. So, So we see here, let us be mindful together. We do not need to be coerced by others. God wants a cheerful leader. He wants us to voluntarily and cheerfully surrender our will towards the purpose, towards the truth. Because that is what pleases Him. Secondly, be mindful together, be followers together. No? Verse 17, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them who walk even as you have for us, as an example. So there you are. Be followers together. Of course, the condition is with me. Even in number one, be mindful together with me. Be followers together with me. But I'd like to stop with the word together. Of course, Paul, of course, Paul is a model here. He is our model. Look at this. What he is saying is, mark your models. Mark nyo, tatakon nyo kung sino yung mga modelo ninyo. Mark your examples. Mark your mark. Mark, Pastor Mark. Oh. Ganda yung example ni Pastor Mark. Markaan nyo yan. Mga yung people. Markaan nyo. Mark them. Know them. Recognize them. Observe them. Observe your goals. You know, Paul is not perfect. He accepted that. He said, I am not perfect yet. I have not attained. I have not yet obtained that. See his perfection. But he is saying, but follow me. Follow me. It does not mean to say that because you are not perfect, you cannot be an example. Despite the fact that we can be weak 
we are still, we still have our imperfection, we can still be models to others. And we should strive to be models for the sake of Christ and for the sake of others who are following. You know, times, one of the things that would encourage us to go on is when we look back. When you notice that there are many people run, rallying after you, people are watching you and they are following your footsteps, you better be careful. You better live a good life. You better live an exemplary life because some people are following you and you are responsible for those people. That would keep you more faithful. You are a model. Everybody, every Christian should be a model in that sense. All of us are imperfect, but we must model the Christian life. There was a missionary in India, Stanley Jones. I don't know if our brethren know about Stanley Jones. And he approached Mahatma Gandhi. You know, Mahatma Gandhi, he became bitter against the Christians. He said, oh, I like Christianity, but I don't like the Christians. Why? Because we become at times the hindrance to Christianity. He said, these Christians, they have a good Lord. Jesus Christ is a perfect example. <laughs> and his teachings are good, but I don't see Christians following and living that example. So he became negative. So Stanley Jones one day came to him and said, what would you suggest that uh, we should do in order that we will be favorable people? He said, be the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Live the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want your Christianity to spread in India, live your Christianity. Live like Christ. Apparently, Mahatma knows the teaching of Christianity. And he has the right to judge because he knows the teaching and he does not see it in the light of the Christians. That is a challenge for us. We are marked to be models. Whether you like it or not, we live, we do not live and die to ourselves. We live and die affecting other people. And as Christians, we are lights. And we are so. That implies that we have an influence. And if we do not leave the example of Christ, we become a bad, evil influence. We misrepresent Christianity in Christ. So mark your models. You see them stand here. You see them teach before you. Mark. Paul is saying, Brethren, be followers together of me. One thing I only I, I notice here is that when he wrote to the Corinthians, he said, Be followers of me. Even as I also am of Christ. Why is it that uh, in here in the book of Philippians, as if he is saying, let come join me. Let's go together. Become like Christ. Let's go together, run after that uh, mark of becoming like Christ. Together with some other models. Hindi naman lang ako nag-iisang model, sabi niya. There are others also. Join us as we go together. But in the book of Corinthians, he says, come. Follow me, for I follow Christ. Sometimes I get the idea, yeah, because the church of Corinth is carnal. They have don't have a good witness and testimony. He said, you better stay back at my back and follow me. Because you cannot go along without others leading you. You are carnal. Sometimes you have to do that. Follow after somebody. If you cannot walk together with them, you 
You imitate them. That's a model. Imitation. Marinig naman tayo, Pilipino. That's one of our masterpieces. To become imitators. As long as we imitate the genuine one. And not the fake ones. And so, that is what uh, Paul is saying to the believers. And then, secondly, mark the masquerading. Not only the models, but the masquerading. Yung masquerade. Yung mga nagmamaskara. He's talking about the enemies of Christ. He's talking about the enemies of Christ who destroy the witness of Christ. They profess to be Christians. They go along with Christians, but they are the ones who destroy the testimony of Christians. Because they are not true believers. And let us be very careful about that. Membership is good. But we should see to it that people who come become members of CDMC are really true Christians. Each CG leader should check that. It's one of us. We have people under us. We should make sure that these people are true believers in Christ. Or else, we will have problem. This would mark the image of the church. Better few with quality than with quantity that would destroy the whole uh, group. So we have to be very careful in that. Some people who would like to be baptized, ask them why would they like to be baptized? What's the purpose? Are they really committed? Are they Christians? We should be watching uh, that we will not be penetrated by such kind of people. And Paul is talking about that. Many. The word is many. What happens if the majority of CDMC are not believers? We heard one pastor who says almost 30% of their members are not sure of being so. We don't want that to happen. We have to guard our rocks. So many walk of whom I told you often that they are enemies of the cross. Paul has been repeating this in his teaching often. Talks about constant warning. I've been warning you about this. And brethren, do not let down your guard. This is the times when there is a great spiritual warfare. And it's not outside the church. It's coming in to the church. Churches divide because of the presence of some who have become enemies of the cross. Or they were enemies of the cross. They are sheep in, uh, they are wolves in sheep's clothing. And in the end, they went out because they were not really of the group, like Judas. And so Paul is saying, I have told you open about these people. And I have wept because of these people. Spurgeon said, when Paul was suffering, when he had gone through a lot of sufferings in his ministry, he did not shed a tear. He did not cry. But when we talk about both teachers, enemies of the cross, oh, he wept. He wept. He cried. And Spurgeon said, that is an extraordinary soul. Why did he cry? He gave three reasons. He cried because of their guilt. Guilt. Their evil doings. Second, he cried because they have affected many. Their evil doings did not rest in them, it affected others. A living, living at the whole lot. You cannot isolate. Here is, you cannot isolate uh, hypocrisy or even false profession. You cannot isolate. 
it will escalate. And he went because they are eternally doomed. He went because they are going to hell to destruction. The word perdition or destruction is just the opposite of the word salvation. It comes from the root word Savior. The opposite of perdition. These people are not saved. And we will notice some things here. First, what is the characteristic of these people? Their appetite is their God. Their appetite is their God. The word used is their belly. Ang kanilang buksit, ang kanilang God, ang kanilang Dios. Their God is their belly. Why? Because they are self-serving. They are not after the cause of Christ. They are there to, to feed themselves. They are there to, to feed their appetite. That is their motivation. Because God is their belly. There is a saying by uh, Euripides when he wrote the Cyclops. No? And it says here, whose God is their belly. It's used, it's used in the writing of Euripides. He said, My plax which I sacrifice to no one but myself, not to the gods. And to this belly, the greatest of the gods, for to eat and to drink each day, and give no trouble to this body. This is the God of wise men. This is the God of wise men. Pero hindi wise sa Panginoon, you were the wise men. Ito ang Diyos nila, ang Diyan. Tulad din ang sabi ni, yung sa Epicoreans na yan, sinabi ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians 15. These people say, let us drink, eat, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. So what is their God? Their belly is their God. Their belly is their God. And their glory is their appetite. Inidiyos nila yung appetite nila, yung tiyan nila. Pero sabi sa Micah, chap, I mean, Hosea chapter 4 verse 7, God has turned their glory into shame. Glory is only for God. Shame is for the idols. What they thought to be glory in worshiping their stomach is actually shame and not glory. They thought they are wise, but they are fools in the eyes of God. In Romans 16, 18, when we conclude the book of Romans, nagpaalam si Pablo sa mga taga-Roma, binanggit na ito, Romans 16, 18. Pinangalanan niya, nagpaalam siya sa mga individuals na Romans chapter 16, pero sa 18, sabi niya, what's this people? I warn you again. Sabi niya, These people serve their body and with good words and fair speeches they deceive you. Panaging inaulit ni Pamaya. So tingnan po natin na hindi po tayo madala sa mga taong nanlilin lang. And if there is anybody spreading uh, such kind of false teaching in our church, alert the leadership right away. Let us not fall into this uh, kind of problem where we will be divided. They mind earthly things. That is also the characteristic. They do not mind the heavenly things. They don't really have an appetite for spiritual things because they are spiritually dead. Oh, but they are so voracious when it comes to worldly things. The Lord tells us, seek those things which are above, 
or Christ seated on the right hand of God. Seek those things. And set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Earthlings was it Earthlings. For us, we are heavenlings. And their end is destruction. Third, be focused together. Be focused together. Let us have one focus. I told, I told you our team has been looking unto Jesus, waiting for His coming, preparing for His coming as like as a bride waiting for the groom. Let us continue to be focused on that. That is where we get our encouragement. That is what gives us energy to press on today when we realize that Christ is coming so soon. Be focused together for our citizenship is in heaven from which also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us be focused on heaven. What is there in heaven? Our commonwealth. Our commonwealth. The word politia or politiuma means citizenship. Citizenship. It is translated as conversation. But again, somebody said conversation or manner of life is not as appropriate as citizenship. And commonwealth is good. It is more sensible in place of that word. Commonwealth. From where are we? Heaven. That is where we are. When you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you were born from above. The word born again literally means born from above. When you accepted the Lord, you were born in heaven and your name is registered in the civil registry in heaven. Thus, you are a citizen of heaven. You are a citizen of heaven. Are you a citizen of heaven? Are you born again? That is our citizenship. Our commonwealth is in heaven. You know, during this time, Roman citizenship is highly prized. Today, going to America is highly prized. To our brethren who are hearing this message so are in America, God bless you there. I know you have a greater and an important mission when you are there. I hope you realize that. We hope you realize that. Hello. Kasi may nagtatanong, bakit hindi na napapaglis yung mga mensahe ninyo? Talk with Jojo, he said, hindi, nandiyan, nakumpay ka lang, hindi ko na-arrange pa. Tinanong ko si Carl, hindi, ilang linggo na na hindi na tayo nag-kumukuha nun, nag-re-recording. In some others, my sister called me yesterday and he said, you know, I was looking for uh, something to comfort me. He said, he's in, she's in Korea. And I went into the Facebook of uh, our brother William, who is a singer. I hope to find some songs there. But there was none. So I I switch on your name and there you have some messages and I'm digesting it every time. Pero kukunti, sabi niya. Bakit hindi nyo nagtagal? Somebody told me also, who is not a member of City Lynch, they said, oh, I was so blessed with the message that I heard regarding men's fellowship. So, there are others, apart from CDMC members, who are taking access of that. It is our ministry. And we should continue with that ministry. Because some people are benefiting from it. And I hope our brethren in the States who are doing their ministry there are also getting fed and uh, are in touch with us. This ministry. So, come on, well. Roman citizenship was so valued before that people would like to go to Rome. It's an honor to 
be there. And so how much, even if it is expensive to go to Rome, they would like to be a Roman citizen. Because when you become a Roman citizen, you have a lot of privileges. And that is the very core of the empire during that time. But how much more if we realize that there is a heaven above and our citizenship, our commonwealth, is there. If we realize that, then we are pilgrims and not these people who permanently, not earthlings, but pilgrims bound to heaven. And so, uh, there was uh, this writing about Plato in his book, The Republic, and this is what he said. The city in which we are the founders and which exists in idea only, for I do not believe that there is such as one on earth. In heaven, there is laid the pattern of it, which he who desires may behold, and beholding may settle himself there. You don't just play to Miss Muena. Sabi niya, I do not think yung modelo natin na siyudad ay nandito sa mundo. Nasa kaisipan lang natin yan. Pero may tunay na siyudad na kung isipin, nandun sa namin. Kung ilalaan lang ng tao kayo sa kaisipan nila doon sa siyudad na yun, they will be settled there. Nakasimso ang buhay nila doon. The question is, is our life settled in that commonwealth? Or are we settled here? This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open shore. Oh, I can feel at home in this world anymore. What a wonderful song that is. If we really mean it. But do we really mean it? That's a good problem. <laughs> Secondly, our common law, for which we look for the Savior. Brethren, I say, why Savior? Because He's going to perfect us. He is Lord, sitting on the right hand of God. He is already exalted above all angels. But He will still come as a Savior. Why? To perfect your salvation. We have been saved from the guilt of sin. We have been saved from the power of sin. We will be saved from the presence of sin when Jesus Christ will come. And that is the day when we say, this is the end of the life. God will reward me according as to how I live the character of Christ in my life. How I did His work, how I behave in my worship, how I behave in my everyday life. According to His Christ likeness, God is going to reward me for that. That is what we are aiming for. That is what we desire. So he says you the earnest expectation for the Savior. Remember again, I use this word in Philippians chapter 1, verse 20, or 22, yeah, 20, when we use the word, the word earnest expectation means with the head that is tilted up and the neck that is stretched up. That should be the attitude. Look for the coming of our Savior. But we are not being advised to do it physically, rather spiritually. We should be looking towards that. You know, even in uh, 40 BC, the word Savior is used as a common title for the Caesars, the Emperor. Julius Caesar himself was called the universal savior of the empire. That's the word savior. It's very important. 
You would either, the Christians before were being persecuted. They would, they would either choose Christ and be martyr or choose the emperor as their lord and savior. Many died for that. But Jesus Christ is our savior. Not anyone else. And we are looking for him to appear in the heavens to come and save us perfectly to transform us. Then our common hope is who shall change our lowly bodies that it may be fashioned like the glorious body of Christ. What's this? The transformation of our bodies. When will this happen? The rapture. This is our hope. Oh, we struggle in this body. This body of humiliation. This lowly body. We struggle with sin in this body. But when Jesus Christ will come, oh my, he will transform this body into a sinless, glorious body like this. Goodbye to sin. Goodbye to the experience of sin. We have now reached our Christ like this, our perfection. Then secondly, total restoration of all things. According to the working by which he is able to subdue all things unto himself. The same power, the power of resurrection, that resurrects us from the dead, is the same power that will subdue all things to Christ. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when it says, everyone following his order, Verse 26, 15, 22, 23, I guess. When he said, when Jesus Christ is going to get all authority and power for him, and he will reign as Lord. That is the view here. I would like to end with this. What is the challenge? What is the problem? Why we are not being transformed? Why are we not becoming Christ-like. What is the excuse? There is no excuse. The power of resurrection is already in us. We have the Holy Spirit. That is the dynamo. When it says, you shall receive power, the word is dynamite. And that dynamite is the power of the resurrection. That's why when a person is saved, he is changed totally. transformation. The power over death. 
in our our own lives. Help us all to be transformed here. In Jesus' name.